If you appreciate this recorded session, we welcome you to join us for our next live group gathering. The link can be found in the description below. So last week, we met on Saturday, and Saturday morning started with a snowstorm here in Colorado. And this morning, well actually it started last night technically, but we are having another snowstorm this weekend again. And yeah, I kind of talked about um, how the snow just makes like things so silent in a way. And I feel like that. It's really quite interesting. Um, and this this day, like today, I noticed that it um, it's quieting things that I wouldn't otherwise expect to be quieted. Um, yeah, without going into too much details. Uh, people around me and um, things that are coming through them in the household. So um, yeah, it was really cool to see. I was sitting there this morning working on my computer and having coffee by the fire and I just noticed like a different quietness in the house. Not just through like physically me not speaking, but other people's tendencies being quieter. Yeah, it's really beautiful. I feel like a happy when people receive that, even if they don't know that's what they're receiving or that's what's happening. Because I can kind of feel that silence changes things on a different level when we can, even if we're not consciously knowing we're receiving it, but I can feel it being received. So that was kind of neat this morning. I also see that silence illuminates things, that there's a spatial quality of the stillness or quietness. And it opens space for expression to come through. And then it, it's sort of like I'm seeing this, like a slingshot almost of that space opening for expression and then slingshotting back into something dense or something ego contracted. And I see that in people around me. Can you guys hear the cat? Maybe not, it probably suppresses it. Lewis is doing his singing. Um, yeah, and, and I guess, so the other thing I was thinking about as I was getting ready today to meet with you was I felt like because of the silence, it I, I had a decently busy week, and for some reason I, there's something in me that's even more quiet, like I have less doing energy, just sort of resting, kind of doing some business task on the computer, you're not really doing much, even though it's kind of technically like a rest slash work day, which is fine, but I just noticed like there isn't anything specific. I feel like the, the silence shows me, like it, it, it like empties me in a way. And so as I was getting ready, I was kind of like, um, my impulse is to not talk at all. My impulse is, is to just stay quiet, to stay in stillness. And um, then I am like, okay, but I'm going to meet with the group where it will be expected for me to, to chat with people or interact. And um, the, there was something that was really loud that I wanted to share because I didn't, before that, I kind of was like, well, like, I kind of usually think, like, is there anything specific going through that, that I want to share, that I want to talk about, or I want to point to? And there wasn't until I was realizing how empty I felt. And 
the silence. It was like, um, because in the emptiness, I was feeling like I don't have anything to give. Like I literally feel emptied out. Like I don't have any energy to give. I don't have any specific thing to say. Um, And yeah, in that, it was sort of like, I, I can't give you this anyways, because you already have it. So I can point to it. I can in, invite us to cultivate together our attention to move and listen and feel into the silence, which I hope my aim is good. But I can't give you what you already have. Like there's a lot I can give you, right? I, I study human behavior. I study psychology. I study non-duality, spirituality constantly. There's like a lot of knowledge in my brain about the different things, techniques and practices and all kinds of things that we talk about, right? And those are kind of things that I can give you in a way, right? We can like directly look in the relative at. And I feel like I do a lot of that with you guys. We engage a lot with the relative stuff, which is good and and helpful and needed in our spaces. But I love the reminder that just naturalness of weather brings to remember the silence that we can't get because it's what we are. It's what we already have. It's our nature to be still, to be quiet. And that doesn't, like you never find silence without sound. You never find stillness without movement. But there is a specific quality of what I'm calling stillness or silence that is kind of crucial to return to, to come back to. This is why I just deeply love the winter, you know, and living somewhere where we have four seasons because we have the winter where it reminds us to go dormant. It reminds us that that's a part of nature to come back to ourselves, to come back to our most immediate experience, right? But there's so much compassion and care needed. That's what I see. And, you know, I'm kind of vaguely speaking about family members around me at the moment. But there's so much care and compassion needed because of what this stillness brings. The other thing that was a theme of today and this morning with the stillness was... um, So I started to get the intuition for... uh, retreat in March online for you guys and really feeling into that and I was playing with the schedule a lot this morning and I thought what's real for me like I'm trying to feel into like how do I serve and what is aligned for me like with all of the areas right all of what do I want to share like what are the servings what are the offerings I want to put into retreat that I deeply am practicing and care about and also I don't want to self-impose a schedule that I think will be really good for everyone or for the retreat. I want to create a schedule that feels natural to me. That feels like if I'm, it's aligned with how I want to move or how this body mind moves naturally. Um, And so I was feeling into that. And so it was sort of like, um, I've been feeling into that in just like all areas of my life and where I'm putting my energy and like intentionally recognizing where I'm putting my energy in my day and my week, um, which is something I haven't really done before. I kind of just let life throw me around a lot, which was fun. But now there's something important in my path about intention and direction. And so, um, yeah, what was it? Uh, Wednesday, I think it was Wednesday or Thursday. I don't know. There was a day where I was like, I don't feel called to work that day, to, to serve or to be giving anything that day of the week and that's kind of a day where I like to be in the studio now that I have the art studio and so I was like I don't want to give that away for retreat so I can put this idea that like if we had a longer retreat it might be better or whatever self-imposed mind idea that I put on it what was real for me was that I don't really want to be serving on that day people so 
then I got the intuition that, well, how about I just make it a day? Because it's also the balance of I, I do value and want to give you guys a decent time frame and retreat, and there's the balance of that and care for that. So I, um, so I got this intuition that I'll just make a silent day. We'll have a bonus day at the beginning of retreat, which will be all silence, silent rounds. Um, and Chad kind of talked to me off of my craziness there because I think this would be a little bit too much for a lot of people. But so we, we, we balanced it. It's a day of a lot of silence to start the retreat, which I feel will be so valuable. Like I, the intuition was coming from creating that like, well... I can still be there with you guys in just a different capacity. And that's kind of what I feel called to do. And there's something about um, starting with silence. There's something about the, the base of experience to be the stillness or the silence. It's like everything is born from that. So it's important to like, as we're moving from stillness or silence and engaging with whatever in the manifestation relative life we're engaging with, we're also remembering and returning to silence. That and in the silence is really where the, the identification process happens, where part of it happens. There's certainly a part of it that happens in the enga engagement that again, we play with a lot and I offer a lot of different ways to play with that. Um, but yeah, so the retreat's called Returning to, st to Silence, um, which feels like so important uh, right now for some reason. I, can, I can't tell you why. I don't know why I get the intuitions, what I'm feeling. I'd imagine if I had conversations with each of you, each of you then it would probably align with something that's coming to you as well, I'd imagine. Um, Yeah, so the, the silence reminds us of something that we can't get from anyone and we can't give to anyone. Like as much as I would in the last uh, couple weeks having my mom live with me, as much as I would love to give this to her, I can't. But when I stop needing to or when I stop wanting to give this to her, the snow comes today and somehow transforms the energy of the room in moments, in pockets, not totally, but in pockets. There's like total pockets of stillness, like nobody's talking. No words are being had. It doesn't mean she's like meditating with me and sitting in total stillness in that way, but there's a stream of consciousness that had breaks today that was like, wow, this is really interesting because I really... I don't know, a part of my human heart is like, if I could give one thing to someone that's suffering, I would give them this. I would remind them of this. I would remind them that all of that conditioning and all of that suffering isn't what they are. But I can't do that. I can't do that unless somebody, even if, even if they want to hear it, I still can't do it. I still can't be the one that does that. But when I rest, when I rest that, even in its subtle forms that I see it show up in, in myself. When I rest that human compassionate heart that I have that yearns to help others, that yearns to show others truth and illuminate truth. When I rest that, there is stillness there. Underneath all manifestation, which that yearning, that desire, that human heart that's a manifestation. Underneath all manifestation is the stillness that transforms more than any of my humanness could. Doesn't mean my humanness isn't valuable and effective. But underneath it, there's something so much more powerful than any individual expression. That doesn't really work on the laws of time or space or self or other at all.
And I would imagine you guys probably have a lot more to teach me about this part of life than I have to teach. Because I was telling Angela, I was like, I feel lucky that I haven't had, not, not like it's a bad thing, but I just haven't really had much of the experience in the last six years of being around people that aren't on the path. My life has literally ended with any friendships or any relationships prior to path. And then it's just been like six years of diving into retreats, being with other people that, that understand the language, that, that are working on their stuff, like surrounded by it and haven't had very much experience of people outside of it. So there's something I, f I do feel fortunate for that, but there's a part of learning how to interact with people that are just being themselves outside of it that I need to learn, that I'm learning. That life is saying, okay, this is a part of it too. But all of the lessons are in the stillness, are in the not doing anything. Just being, coming back to being. And in the being teaches us the appropriateness of when to engage and when to just feel, when to go inside, when to, to Come back to yourself. But it's, it takes this very um, nuanced orientation to discernment, to know what it feels like when any bit of, hmm, how, how would I call it? Directional delusion is happening, I guess. When there's any bit of any energy that's trying to direct, because any bit of energy trying to direct will be coming from some, even if it's subtle way of seeing this or that. It, any bit of direction always comes from a sense of separation on some level. There's nothing that needs to be directed if there isn't the belief or the energy of separation happening. It doesn't mean that direction doesn't happen, but I would call maybe natural direction more like flow, which doesn't have a directional quality actually. It's different, but I guess when we hold any sense, this is what I'm seeing, like when we hold any sense of right or wrong on any level, or me or them, on any level, even though there's relative truths and there's relative practicality to that, when we energetically hold it, without I don't know, it's like in a split second, reality can become a giant distortion actually, but happening on many subtle levels. So the, the stillness, the silence is the, the quest to return to true nature, to return to that which doesn't move. Doesn't move from lack doesn't move from separation, doesn't move from me, or, from me or them, from any of those dichotomies, any of those separate energies, expressions of energy.
and actually the stillness is really loud, which is a funny paradox. But it's, um, it's got a depth. So we can't give this to you. You can't get this from me. You can only be invited to see, to stop and see. This is always here. and be invited into the learning of the trust of this, the remembering of the trust of this. But it's pretty radical in a way to live life this way is to, to fully surrender all personal mm, direction to life. All selfish orientation. And to see how much distortion is intertwined into the relational world, the conceptual world we've created through thought. And how we We actually don't have to interact with it. Like there's a mechanism that can stop interacting with it. And it's, it's sort of like living curiosity. I really was curious with my mom coming to stay with me, how, how that would happen, how that would unfold. Would it trigger me? Would I be, would it trigger me into interacting in a familiar way that I used to be, the person I used to be, the pattern I used to be with her? And it hasn't at all, which is really interesting. But it has triggered some subtle bits of, of um, hmm, separation, I'd call it, I guess. Some subtle bits of Mm. experiencing in moments she is her and I am me that bit has showed up or it's triggered like this I feel bad for her story that I wish she wasn't struggling which not to deny again the relative heart and compassion, but I just see when I hold that, and it's subtle, it's so subtle, but it's like, I just see it and I feel it, it's very, I'm very curious to it, to see what's, what's happening in me, like, what is, what is this inspiring in my behavior, and how is it affecting her, and to see these moments, to just be present for them, it's like a, hmm,
it's like a play you know I was gonna say game in, in the best way possible but it's like sort of just sort of stepping into uh, just staying present to see the dream and the not dream interact with one another to see how the story plays out and how the conditioning it's like I don't know I try not I try not to like necessarily hold it but it's just obvious energetically there's one of us that holds a heavy conditioning and one of us that doesn't and it's just such an interesting thing it's just such an interesting experience to be a part of And I really feel everything is, is here to see clearer. To show truth, to illuminate truth, every experience is. To bring, to sh it's like shining light, shining light on the places that need to be embodied or seen or energies that need to be expressed. <laughs> 